Assessment is a critical aspect of laboratory quality management, and it can be conducted in several ways. In this video, we will differentiate the two kinds of laboratory control assessment. The different kinds of quality control assessment done in the laboratory may either be inter-laboratory assessment or intra-laboratory assessment. Inter-laboratory assessment refers to the comparison of one laboratory to other laboratories outside, while intra-laboratory refers to the quality control assessment done within the lab using its own quality control scheme. The first one is intra-lab QC. Again, intra-lab is within the laboratory quality control, so these are the things done by the medical technologist in the laboratory. So intra-lab, this involves the daily monitoring of accuracy and precision. How do we monitor accuracy again? It's by testing control materials. So this is done per shift. Usually, it is done at night time kapag wala nang masyadong pasyente or hindi na toxic. So this is performed by the night shift. Uh, usually at midnight okay so they would run all the controls of the machines of all the tests to make sure that um, the system or the machines are working properly so when morning comes and there's a lot of specimen uh, the whole laboratory is now ready for testing so intralab can detect both random and systematic errors as you will see later when we perform the charts it is also the analysis of control samples and together with the patient samples. So what do we do with the control samples that we tested? We should compare it and determine the result if it fits the expected value. So usually we have three different types of control materials. We have the high control or the positive control, the low control or the negative control, and the normal. So these are all tested on all the anal analytes on all the machines. And then we would determine if they are within control limits or outside control limits. If they are within control limits, that means that the analytic method is working properly. So go lang tayo sa testing. But if it is outside control limits, then that means that there might be a possible problem. So you have to find this problem first before you proceed to testing patient samples. Intralaboratory or internal quality control is performed within a laboratory to monitor and ensure the reliability of test results. Control materials are used to monitor the test system. These are tested in the same way as patient samples to verify that quality patient test results have been attained. If the results on a control material are not within acceptable ranges, then we assume that there is a problem in the test procedure, equipment, or samples themselves. Patient results are not reported until the cause of the problem has been found and resolved. The controls are retested to verify that everything is working normally. The next one is the inter-lab quality control. So again, this involves other laboratories. So these are proficiency testing programs given by a reference laboratory. So here in the Philippines, we have different reference labs. But for chemistry, our reference lab would be the lung center of the Philippines. So they will be the one giving the proficiency samples. So they'll send periodic samples to the laboratory. Uh, the samples have known concentrations to them but unknown to the testing laboratory so for example we are a laboratory and we are um, due for a proficiency testing the lung center will send us the specimen we will test it and our result should match the known concentration which uh, they know now if it doesn't match hindi tayo pareho ng result then that means we have a problem now, a difference of more than 2 SD indicates that the laboratory is not in agreement with the rest of the laboratories because what they also do is that they compile the results of all the laboratories using the same method. Okay, So they send specimens to a lot of laboratories at the same time and then they collect all the specimen or they collect all the results um, at a given time and they would calculate for the agreement of the test results of these laboratories. So if your laboratory falls outside the reference limit that they have indicated which means that your laboratory um, does not give the same result as most of the laboratories then that means we also have a problem so this maintains a long-term accuracy and analytical methods it determines the estimates of state-of-the-art inter-laboratory performance because if you perform equals properly and your results are correct 
and then when you're compared to a different laboratory you are comparable to the other laboratories and that means that your laboratory is state-of-the-art it gives quality results Intralab or external quality assurance scheme or EQUAS is an important feature for the improvement of the laboratory's quality management system. It objectively checks the laboratory's performance using an external agency or facility. This allows a method of comparison of different laboratories with each other. Sometimes EQA is interchangeably used with the phrase proficiency testing. In the Philippines, a group of laboratories or different laboratories are tasked to monitor the EQA and these are collectively called as the National Re Reference Laboratories and they monitor the National External Quality Assurance Scheme in the country. Also, participation is required for accreditation as it would give a good measurement of the laboratory's performance. EQA is divided into three different types according to the WHO and these are proficiency testing, rechecking or retesting, and on-site evaluation. The first type is proficiency testing. This is the most commonly employed type of EQA because it is able to address many laboratory methods like chemistry, hematology, microbiology, and immunology testing. The process for proficiency testing starts with the NRL or the National Reference Laboratories. These external providers would send unknown samples for laboratory testing. Usually, challenge samples like these are provided at regular intervals. Laboratories will receive the samples from the proficiency testing provider and would analyze these samples received. After analyzing, the results would be sent back to the NRL. The NRL will now check if the results submitted by these laboratories are correct. Afterwards, they will also be compared with the different laboratories. After analyzation and comparison, a report is given back to the participating laboratory with the performance evaluation and how they compared with other laboratories. The second type of EQA is rechecking or retesting. Rechecking is when the slides that have already been read are rechecked again by a different laboratory. This is usually used traditionally for the microscopic slides for acid fast bacilli or AFB. The recommendation for this rechecking procedure is that a blinded method should be performed, meaning that the laboratory who is doing the rechecking on the slides does not know the original result of the laboratory. So after rechecking or reading the slides again, they will compare the results with the laboratory that released the results, and these results should match. They should be the same. If not, then certain procedures should be followed. The second one is retesting. Retesting is when samples that have already been analyzed are tested again or retested. This is usually done for human immunodeficiency virus rapid testing on situations where it is performed outside the traditional laboratory or if it is performed by persons who are not trained inside the laboratory medicine. And for this one, the blinded process is not performed. The third type of EQA is on-site evaluation. This is usually done when the first two types cannot be done or if they are difficult to be performed. It may also be conducted in conjunction or together with the first two types, either proficiency testing or rechecking and retesting. This is done by the periodic visits done by evaluators to the laboratory. The advantage of this type of evaluation is that it would obtain a realistic picture of the laboratory practices by observing the laboratory under routine conditions in order to check that it is meeting its quality requirements. The External Quality Assurance Scheme helps to assure customers such as physicians, patients, and health authorities that the laboratory can produce reliable results. The different benefits of EQAS are, first, it allows the comparison of performance and results among the different laboratories. Second, it provides an early warning for any systematic problems that may occur. Third, it provides an objective evidence of testing quality. Fourth, it can indicate areas that might need any improvement. And fifth, it identifies the training needs of the laboratory. 
that would be all for this video. If you now know the difference of interlab and intralab proficiency testing, please like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you for watching.